Were you uh, as explicit with the House Speaker and Pro Tem this morning as you are being right now? Yes, indeed. Did they have a verbalized any reaction? <coughs> well, I wouldn't want to get into details of our discussions. You've also been meeting back and forth on UI. Is, is that heading in the same direction as the budget? I'm an optimist that we can uh, uh, come to some agreement there. I'm certainly willing to find some common ground. Uh, the key for me is to find a, a solution that's balanced, that, um, that does not put all or most of the burden uh, on employers, because uh, the employers of Vermont are the folks who create jobs. And as their costs increase, whether it's through property taxes or insurance costs or uh, other types of, uh, of uh, costs of doing business, they're going to be less able to create or retain jobs. And it would be quite an irony to uh, to increase the cost of the unemployment uh, tax uh, to pay for those who lose their jobs and in doing so eliminate jobs. So we have to find a balanced approach that uh, that uh, reduces benefits uh, responsibly and also increases the contribution rates. And I also believe and I said this to the legislative leaders today, but this has to be looked in, the, in, in a bigger context, looked, looked at in a bigger context. Um, we were talking only about some increases in unemployment insurance contributions, that would be one thing, but we're talking about the litany of other tax increases that I just discussed, the increased taxes that were approved last year and that they seem at this point disinclined to reconsider. So the total burden on the people who are creating jobs and keeping our economy moving uh, would be quite substantial if all of these things are approved. So I hope we can find a, a middle ground on the unemployment insurance proposal. I'm prepared to do that. I'm spending a lot of time on it, as you know. Um, we have to look at that in the broader context of the impact on people who create jobs. It doesn't seem like time is running out. I mean, the House Speaker said yesterday, if we can't find an agreement with the governor within 24 hours, we're just going to go anywhere. Right well, uh, if they choose to stop negotiating and move ahead on their own, that's obviously their choice. Uh, I'm prepared and eager to continue our negotiations and find a little ground. How close would you say you are? <coughs> well, it's hard to say. I think we're closer than we were with each uh, discussion. How would you define middle ground? Um, well, balanced. Um, um, some of the ideas that uh, um, that uh, were put on the table by some legislators throughout the period we've been discussing this uh, have, have put all the burden on employers, literally, at least one version of what they proposed with no impact on the other side of the equation. And I think providers understand the need for balance. I'll give you one example. Um, it seems to me that employees who are fired for misconduct ought not to be drawing unemployment benefits. But um, labor unions have a lot of sway in the legislature. They keep uh, insisting that that shouldn't be restricted. I think Vermonters understand that. I think Vermonters realize that if you, you are discharged from misconduct, then, then your employer shouldn't bear the burden of, of uh, an unemployment benefit. So there are a number of issues we continue to talk about. And I think we are getting closer and hope that we can find the isn't there a big difference between being fired for misconduct and being fired for gross misconduct? Misconduct is a fairly general term that a lot of things could fall under that. Is it really fair to use that as the standard? Well, I think Vermonters uh, recognize that if you uh, commit misconduct, that that's not a, uh, not a situation where we ought to be paying benefit. Um, there's a question of what the definition of each of those terms is, and that needs to be resolved, and maybe that's difficult to resolve in the um, time frame and context of our discussions this week. Perhaps uh, uh, the Commissioner of Labor could be empowered to, uh, by rule, um, flesh out a definition. Um, we obviously don't uh, want people to be uh, uh, to lose their jobs for something that's frivolous, but there's a process with several levels of appeal to, to correct that. I think there are enough protections in place for employees who are, who are dismissed uh, inappropriately. Then you come back to the argument up a little bit. Sometimes people get fired for misconduct that's not that egregious um, and is misunderstood. You know, misunderstanding 
What's your reaction to that? Well, I mean, uh, about two thirds of the uh, cases that go to appeal are resolved in the employee's favor. So um, it seems to me the administrative process and the case law with respect to uh, access and unemployment benefits is, is quite generous. So I'm sure that if there's any uh, denial of benefits for um, misconduct, it will be well vetted and corrected if it needs to be in the appeals process. 